wonderful. I love you guys, and uh, I think I, I was sharing with uh, First Lady in the back. Amen. A lot of times you see me come to you, because know, people will say, well, did you see anything in me? Look, I see Jesus in me. <laughs> Yesterday when I went from one to one to one and went around from person to person, it wasn't because I saw anything in you or I was looking to see it. I wanted to, if, if there was any grace, whether it was prophetically or healing, I wanted to be able to take the time yes. to be able to minister. Do you know how fortunate we are? We are so fortunate in number that I get to do something with you I can't do with, with a two or three thousand people. Yeah. I drive security crazy when I walk in the middle. I've been to, been to churches and walk in the middle of five thousand people. And they, when they were saying, you can't do that, you can't do that. I love touching the people. Amen. I, don't, I don't like to preach like Alvis has left the building. Right. <laughs> Does everybody understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. To today, amen, there's a message that we're going to preach, amen, and minister to you today, amen, and and, uh, and I want to thank God for you, as I said, and the title of the message that we're going to minister to, uh, minister to you today, amen. And I, and I want you to support part of a new book that I'm writing, but it's a message that we're going to hear. And we want to pray for your children. Amen. All right, let, amen. we're going to pray for your children. Amen. And the title of the message, amen, that we're going to minister today is called Shadow Wars. Amen. Understanding fear, terror, and shadow attacks. Shadow Wars. And I want you to open up your Bibles to the book of Psalms, chapter 4, verse 8, and then Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 33. Now, I'm going to take my time and minister this now. Now, let me just explain something to you. When you teach and minister deliverance, for the way that I do, the, my style of ministering deliverance is I give you information. And then that information gives you how to use it yourself. Amen. I was raised up as a small child, and my mama and my auntie, they raised me. They taught me to say my prayers before I went to bed every night. Amen. Amen. Isn't it amazing somehow how they actually get older and get in your teens, that gets by you. Yeah. And, 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 and you look at the prayer as a little prayer. Yeah. They used to pray, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Now somebody can tear it apart and say, well, well, let me know where it is. This where I understand what you're saying. But she taught me that there is a higher God, which is Jesus Christ, than his Father, mm -hmm. through the Holy Ghost. Yes. That there is a higher thing, higher than me, that rests upon me and keeps yes. me when I'm asleep Amen. and when I'm dormant. Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes. So as I begin to talk to you now, especially you that are intercessors as well, this that we're dealing with in this shadow wars. And this is the first uh, video, the first tape that I've ever done on this, which is a new book of mine amen. that we're coming out with. And then it's dealing with, amen, as I said, understanding fear, terror, and shadow attacks. And I'm ministering this right now for you, but for the children. Amen. And this thing will have the children all scared. Because you always holler sometimes, what do you do with the children when you're having deliverance? Well, the same thing we do when we have a prophecy. Same thing we do, amen, when we're, amen, benevolently giving out candies. And we, we want them to hear the word of the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Are you listening at me? Yeah. Amen. Now, in Psalms chapter 4, verse 8, Psalms chapter 4, verse 8, reads like this. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep, for the Lord maketh me. To dwell in safety. Do you hear the covering scripture? Yes. Here it is, the songwriter saying, I will lay me down in peace. Uh, we New Testament people, I will lay me down in the Prince of Peace. Yes. And he will cause me to dwell in safety. Yes. My home and my prayer as I rest myself to go to bed, amen. I rest myself with this understanding that, Lord God, you cover my nighttime. Yes. Because there are many out here that are operating in witchcraft or soulless prayers. Yes. That at, the, at night there are people who are up praying and up releasing things. Yes. And, and we need to know that when we are asleep, that's the time when we're dormant, yes. inactive. Now I want you all to listen to this. Do not think this is for somebody else out there. Amen. All right. Because I'm making this introduction because in a very few minutes as we're breaking this down, many of you will realize that you have been attacked by night spirits. Yeah. Yeah. And what someone hasn't told many of us is that that demon that came to attack you 
very well possible was a generational following demon. Other people in your family had these same manifestations, but we don't talk about these things. Then we get saved and in church, then we say we don't confess these things. Really meaning, you don't just acknowledge where our circumstances are. Amen. Got that? Yes. Look at your neighbor and say, that doesn't make it go away. Yes. See, your confession of faith is the sword and the warfare that you use towards bringing down this thing. Amen. Everybody got me? Yes. So by my house and me being saved, when I will go down and go to sleep, amen, when I lay myself down to rest, I'm looking for the covering of the Lord Jesus Christ over my mind, over my children, over my grandchildren yes. in Jesus' name. Father God, I, right now I have a grandchild getting ready to be born in June and a great grandchild. I already have others that are already here. That's two new babies coming into my family in this month of June, in the month of June alone coming. And I've already been interceding and covering my generation that the strongholds that tormented and torture and terrors of the night will not manifest in my Amen. children, nor my children's right. children. Amen. My little babies will not sit there and fight as if they're fighting something in their sleep, but they'll rest and sleep peacefully yes. as if angels are watching yes. over them. Does anybody know what I'm talking yes. about? Amen. 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 But the Proverbs chapter 333, and I'm not going to dwell there long. Proverbs 3.33 says, The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked, but he blesses the habitation of the just. And the key scripture I want to stand with in this verse here is God blesses the habitation of the just. Look at somebody and say, God, God blesses, blesses the habitation, the habitation of, the just. of the just. And guess what? We the just. Amen. 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 Yes. Now, when I first started recognizing this spirit, Recognizing this stronghold, I was ministering in New Jersey. Hear what I'm saying. And a young mother, about 26 years old, walks up, she's pregnant. And when she comes up for prayer, the Lord gives me a word of knowledge. And I looked at her, and immediately, through this word of knowledge and discerning of spirits, I went into like an open vision, meaning I could see the church folk, but I also could see a picture that took me back to her as a small child in the crib. Over her crib was standing a black shadowy figure, what I call shadow people. Nightmare spirits, they've been called many things. They've been called even old hags. Now mind you, once again, she's 26 years old. When she walks up in the prayer line, she didn't look like nothing in the world was bothering her. Girlfriend just looked like I'm carrying a baby and I'm carrying it well. Amen. How many got to stand there? Yes. I looked at her and I said, sweetheart, I said, uh, first of all, I said, I, I said, I want to say what I feel that the Lord is showing me. See, I'm one of them guys that don't, don't always think I'm right. Mm -hmm. I'm one of them guys that don't always think I'm accurate. That way, if I make a mistake, I can get, bring myself in check. Amen. But if, if you're always right, can't nobody else tell you when you're off. Yes. But I'm going to move on past that because that's another teaching altogether, isn't it? <laughs> so what I wanted to find out to make sure that the, the information that I was getting in the spirit was accurately coming from God. Amen? Because I understand dual manifestations and that's another teaching. All right. So anyway, when, she, when I, said, I looked at her, I said, sweetheart, I want to tell you what the Lord, what I feel that the Lord is showing me. I said, you are in a crib. I said, and over your crib is a shallow figure. And when I said it, she went ah! and started manifesting. Fell to the floor. And what have you? And we gently began to command that demon to come in. I commanded not to pull her body, not to flash, not to do anything crazy, but just come out in Jesus' name. And the name of Jesus and the power of God broke that thing. Amen. When she came to when she came to, and by the way, what was happening was generational spirits that had been following her family line, there was one inside of her that was calling this shadowy figure. 
Now, every time this happens, every time this happens, we're not going to create a doctrine saying, yeah, you had an attack like that. It must be a demon inside you and a generational curse calling it. Now, that's not what I'm saying. Somebody said that was this case. No, that was this case. So, but I saw that, they, and that I saw that this other spirit was called in this spirit. It was something that had been released into her family, released into her generation. Why, how? By former occult practices that some of her patriarchs and matriarchs had done. Listen. You pray over your children. As one of those baby girls over there, uh, the other day was showing me her, your, your three sons had biblical names. And, and you did that, y'all did that because you believe God in them. You believe the righteousness of God. You wanted them to have holiness on them. Well, there are people who are just as serious as you are, but ignorant. Who are in our families. That when they contacted the roof worker, when they contacted a psychic, yes, I won't go down. When they contacted a psychic, when they guided their life by the stars, the moons, the horoscope, right. they covered the entire family with that thing. Yes. So some of us, Jesus has actually saved you out of being under the covering of another God, all right. which is not a God at all. Yeah. Right. And so. Those people in our family lines, innocently and ignorantly. Now, how does this happen? Glad you asked, baby girl. It happens to number one, folklore and tradition. All right. Folklore and tradition. Two, accepted beliefs that nobody tests by the word. Wow. Am I making sense to you? Amen. Got that? Nobody questions it. We just accept it. So. This young lady's family, now what God did was, now see, when people need deliverance, once again, I'm going to add this to it too. When the Spirit of God delivers somebody, folks act like the tragedy is me getting the deliverance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, you understand what I'm saying here? They act as if, oh, you mean I had that? Sweetheart, you ought to praise the Lord. Yeah. You mean to tell me what happened is you gave your life to Christ and he's been maturing you and cleansing you and sanctifying you and delivering you. Yeah. So that was the error he needed to deal with that day. And you got delivered. So instead of acting all depressed and embarrassed, we ought to drop confetti and have a parade. Amen. <laughs> Because it says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. So this young lady, it comes up, and when I begin to talk to her after the demon was cast out of her, bless her heart, she says to me, and she was just weeping, she said, I just thank God for you. I just asked the baby, tell me what's going on. She said, now remember, she was in the crib when I saw this thing operating. She said, Brother Hopkins, all my life, even up to now, there is a fear in me that I don't want to go in a dark room. I don't want to be left alone. And I, I don't like to be in a house by myself. And she said, Brother Hopkins, I felt this all my life. All my life there's been this fear there, but I couldn't put my hands on it. It was an unidentified uneasiness, like something was following me, something was after me. This girl was going through a shadow war. This thing, amen, these things had set themselves up, had been tormenting her. And listen, she not only got her deliverance, but I believe that deliverance broke the yoke also on the baby that was inside of her. I wish somebody would say, thank you, Jesus. There is a shadow war going on and in most cases there's hardly anyone to talk to that will understand what has happened. And then some of us only have a vague understanding of how these things operate. So in this teaching on shadow wars, amen, understanding fear, terror, and shadow attacks, I want to break down as best knowledge as I have right now. Because some of you out there know more than I do in this subject and I want to learn from you. So this is where I'm at in the beginning of this first DVD and first tape on shadow wars. Okay. So, and about now, now, the first thing that we have to understand is Psalm 4 and 8 said, somebody said, the spirit of peace. Yeah. Amen. Now that's the presence of the Holy Ghost. When you're praying, release over your children, release over your generation the spirit of peace as they go to sleep. Don't just talk them in the bed and leave them. Don't just send them upstairs. Don't just poke them in the room. 
Tell them, shut up, go to sleep. Pray over them. Because there is, when you are dormant, and no, you're not the victim of the devil, where the devil just, just has his way, okay? He don't wake up one day and just yawn and say, oh, I'll jump on you. Got that? But we need to seriously understand, man, that there, this, this war that we're dealing with and what have you have, comes after our children. Matter of fact, while you got your crayons out, write this down. <laughs> Strongholds that attack children many times operate over their invisible friends. Now, I'm not talking about creative play. I'm not talking about creative playing. There is a creative child play that children do. They're playing and they know they're playing. But there is also the enemy has sometimes and not always the case. There are times that the enemy in certain children's life, especially those who have in their family line a propensity of the spirit operating in and out of the family line through generational doors that were open. Shadow people come through portals. Got that? Now, in the beginning here, the only portal I'm going to talk about right now is the portal of generational former occult practices in generations before us or us ourselves that now see fit to want to mimic or manifest on our children. Amen. Got that? Yeah. When they tell you that they saw something in the closet, All they right. saw something after it, amen, they're not lying. That's right, right. That's right. Oh, shut up, just go ahead and be quiet. Just go up there. Mm -hmm. yeah, can you imagine, amen, a demonic power harassing an innocent child's mind, and the only thing the adult said who should have been protecting and covering them was, shut up, go to sleep. Yeah. One child, one, one uh, story was shared where there was a child about five years old. Him and another was playing in the bedroom. And I don't want your kids to act like this is going to happen to you. This is what happened. It was, was an experience that child went through. And he said that when he was playing in the room, all of a sudden there was a presence, a shadowy presence that came in the room. But it came from under his bed. <clears throat> and this is like when a child said, there's something under my bed. Amen. I want you to know and let them know that mommy and daddy will pray over this thing and take authority in it. I rebuke the spirit of fear in you, coming at you. I'll say little Johnny, little Johnny or little Sylvia. I rebuke that thing coming at you, baby. And I command it. Look, come here. Where, where you see it come from? In Jesus' name, I command this area in Jesus' name to be set, to be possessed by us, to be possessed by us because every bit of the ground and foot our feet tread upon we possess. Do not Push them off. Because some of you, even adults that are listening to this, you couldn't even tell nobody. When you did, they say, oh, you crazy. Uh -huh. But that strange fear manifests, and sometimes even in your adult life now, you feel tinges of it. I'm just telling the truth and shame and that. This kid, when he looked underneath of the bed, there was an opening there. There was a light there. And he saw figures in that light. When he ran to get his parent, when they looked under the bed, nothing. Right. Mm -hmm. Got that? Yeah. Nothing. The thing that I would have advised him to do is not, not play the child off, but pray over the child, play over the room, and take authority over it. Amen. Got that? Because the enemy loves attacking the innocent. So, so far, what have we learned? We've learned that they can come through generationally. They can be messing with even babies. Listen, when a shadowy figure in shadow wars, sometimes your pets can tell they're there. I've seen and known of animals that were back up in a corner and go, yeah. and, they, and they're looking at a certain position. That's when I go, to those that don't understand, I go on a prayer language straight up because I'm a warrior. I pray in English and I pray in my prayer language in its own. Do you hear me what I'm saying to you? So when, the, when a shadow war is taking place, the atmosphere in that room immediately changes. Got that? And by the way, no matter how much Holy Ghost you got, that doesn't mean that this thing won't challenge you. Right. 
So let's not be all cute. Well, I just don't receive that. Need to save. Save all that that you're saying, baby, for somebody that's really going to go fight you. Because I maintain to tell you, while you're saying, I don't claim it on this, there's folks, amen, who love the Lord, who serve the Lord, who, amen, who are straight up warriors, probably fighting more than you do, right. and winning wars more than some of us, amen. who are taking authority when the enemy dares to show his face. Right. <laughs> now, just by this, just by the, you don't have to raise your hand unless you want to, how many of you have ever had a thing coming, you feel like you're paralyzed, holding you right down? And then the only way that it broke, we said, Jesus, Jesus! Yeah. <laughs> Evelyn shared with me as she was growing up as a child, it was, one time she had her hand over the side of her bed and she felt something physically grab her. Now we know we ain't gonna have that step it up on Hopkins Estate. <laughs> <laughs> Give the Lord a big hand, praise. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, we're gonna break that up. <laughs> So, uh, and I want you to go to Psalms 91. So we release the spirit of peace on them. Cover their mind, will and emotions with the grace and the peace of the Lord. Bless them, bleed the blood of Jesus over every room and every realm of your home. Don't just fall out to sleep looking at, amen, the last reality show that you fell asleep on. Pray! Got that? Somebody says shallow wars. Now let me go ahead because I'm really going to get a lot out and then we're going we're to go in prayer. And what we're going to do today, man, I'm not going to run around our room. We're going to come up those that desire to, those that want to, and if you bring your children with you because we want to pray over them with you. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yeah. What we, me and Evelyn recognize, the grace that was in this praise and worship, there are certain places that I'm released to teach on another level at certain places. This morning, this house is oily enough for me to release this. I try to teach this in some places. They sit there looking at me chewing gum and can't wait to go out so they can go see something crazy on TV. And they want to have she come. Amen. But you're sitting here in anticipation saying, bring it. Yeah. All right. Look what it says in here. So the first thing we want to deal with is what we call terrors of the night or night terror. These are spirits usually operating in the dream realm, causing its victim to be attacked by their sleep with terrifying dreams or showery figures that hold them down. Got that? Now, I'm not even going to get into spirit marriages and sexual attacks because that's another CD. I'm dealing now with just the presences that comes in the room. Psalm 91 verse 5. Psalm 91 verse 5 says, Thou shalt not. This is what the word of the Lord says. Amen. Now, once again, this is the war. This is the war cry here. How you stand against the enemy. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that fly by day. Now, how do you know that you're dealing with a terror by night? You're dealing with a terror by night no matter what your age is. If you still have to have a light on because if you go in a room with a light up, you just can't handle it. We had a young man at our church years ago. Uh, he had a spirit of fear of darkness. And it followed him all of his life. When we cast that demon out, the demon was actually arrogant. Yeah, I had him, bam. Uh, yeah, I said, well, I'm fear of darkness. I make darkness thick to his eyes. When he sees darkness, I, that's when I close in. Got him so he don't even go in his own room. Hmm. Scared. And when we cast that demon out, the next week the young man came back to church. He said, I got a testimony. I said, What you got a testimony? He said, Man, I got a testimony. Pastor, let, pastor, let me testify. I said, Go ahead. I said, What's up? He said, I took me a chair. I set it in the middle of my room. Yeah. He, I said, Lord, if you deliver me from the fear of darkness, it's on. All right. I said, All right then. He hit that switch, click, set that chair down, yeah. and sat there and just begin to pray. And he said, guess what? I said, what? He said, nothing happened, and I ain't scary. <laughs> How do you know that you're delivered? You change. Yeah, amen. Look at somebody saying, you know you're delivered when you change. <laughs> when you, what, whether you understand it or not, hear what I'm saying. He just then took the minion of a dimension in his room that was taken captive by a shallow war. Mm -hmm. That room, not the living room, not the kitchen, right. got that? Mm -hmm. That room, that portal was open until peace and authority and deliverance 
shower down. Amen. Are y'all seeing this a little bit more better? Yes. Now, now the, really, you've got to understand, you're talking about a portal because your room don't always feel like that. Right. Come on. That's right. You're talking about a dimension. The Apostle Paul spoke it like this, and I want to teach you something about the, two, the realms of the Spirit. They operate, on, they operate on the same principles, both realms. The, what, I, what am I saying? In other words, the Spirit of God operates in the dream realm. The Spirit of God opens up portals. The Apostle Paul said in 1st, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 1 through 3, he said, he said, whether I was in the body or not, God knoweth. And he talked about a realm where he was taken into the third heaven. There was other prophets in them talking about how they looked up and they saw certain things. That is a dimension. They never left where they were at. That's the whole different realm altogether. But what I'm talking about is they never left where they at, but they had an open vision. Well, the demonic realm also, because it was created actually to serve God and operate under God in these realms. Do you get it? When the one third of the angels and any other creatures that followed and fell with them, they were supposed, they still carry the capable gift that they were supposed to operate in God with. So I don't know why some of us think, amen, that doesn't get it, that what we're dealing with, just like us, we can have a gift of the Spirit in our life, and also at the same time be just as trifling as can be. Amen. And the gift, when long the gift is operating, you are awesome. But when your other mess come up, you are a mess. Amen. How many understand what I'm saying? The, the spirit realm is the same way. <clears throat> so what this shadow warfare is, they are spirits. There are manifestations of different types of spirits. Not, and I hate to use the term just demon because that is a generic word that the church has come up with in our limited knowledge. Because it's not just demons. I mean, when I said it, you look at me kind of like this. All right, living creature. Is that a demon or angel? It's Zoe. Demon or angel. A cherubim, seraphim, gesture in the angelic realm. But they're different creatures. They're different manifestations. We're dealing with demonic powers. Those shadow forms are a different manifestation. All right. Amen. Moving right along. Okay, so it says here in Psalms 91 verse 2 says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Got that? All right. In other words, he's saying here, the word refuge means he's my shelter and my protection from danger and distress. So right now when you're challenging these spirits of fear and terror, the Lord is your protection. He's your shelter in danger and in distress. God damn, surely he shall deliver. Psalm 91 verse 3. Surely he shall deliver you, deliver thee from the noisome pestilence. Somebody say noisome pestilence. Noisome pestilence. This word noisome is hava, And it means something rushing upon me. God damn, hava. In other words, it meant something falling. And that's the way it feels when it's fear and it's something hits you. It feels like something rushed on you. So surely he shall deliver me from the noisome pestilence. No evil shall befall me, neither shall any plague come nigh my dwelling. I will not fear the terror by night. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So night, now listen to what it says. Listen to what it says here. In Psalms 40, 91 verse 4, he shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thy trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Somebody say his truth is my shield and buckler. So that's the way you want to warfare when you're praying for your kids, for your grandchildren, or yourself. Or yourself. Because there are adults in here that it doesn't happen all the time, but it has an irregularity. There are certain strong 